itch, itch. But I love them. I love them. But you're right. Animals are, as they say, sentient beings. They do have feelings. They do feel pain. They do they do grieve. You know, they, they feel loss. And I think that is part of the intrinsic value that animals have, which is perhaps not reflected in the law, which is why they're considered property and not sentient beings which allows people to discard them like property and treat them anyhow. The thing about it is and they all have personalities just like human beings. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have some here. One, one is a drama queen. <laughs> you know, her, name is, her name is Miranda. I rescued her and she was up in Mount Hope. Right now, normally when you take a dog there, you have to put give them the name and then they'll put your surname. Right, yes. I couldn't remember the name that the people who were dumping it, they were selling it to put it to sleep. And I couldn't remember. They said Ashong, eh? And so they just put Miranda. So Miranda is a drama queen. From the time I reach home, she starts to cry and do cartwheel and cry and cry. Oh my God, drama, drama, drama. Then I have another one that I rescued, another Pompec. She was up in Maracas, St. Joseph. Not a drop of hair. She was mange, covered in mange. People were kicking it and all that kind of thing. Whitney, now Whitney is the smallest dog and yet she feels she's a pit bull. The baddest, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So she died and came back alive thinking she was a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> then I have another one who is crossed with is a, a German Shepherd and Masi Potong or whatever, big dog. So I have these little beds, right? And they, it is so funny. She curls up in this little bed. I went and I bought her this huge bed. You know, she will not go in the huge bed. She still wants to curl up. You know what? They're so sweet. They're so, I mean, like, I would sit down and look at them. And each one of them, the eight that I have here, they all have their own personality. So I don't know how somebody could want to abuse a dog. How could they want to abuse an animal? Even sherry has a cat, a guinea pig, and it died the other day. Well, oh God, she was in a state. Up to now, we don't know why the guinea pig died, but you know, they're all just so loving and they're, so, they're good companions. And people need to recognize that. Yes. Let me ask you about, again, uh, the, the work that you do and, and the tools that it takes on you. I imagine that physically it's demanding and emotionally as well, because you, you would come across cases where um, you see an animal in severe pain or distress and and you know having to deal with that on a regular basis must be difficult how do you deal with that it is very very difficult it's emotionally at the end of the day I'm normally mentally and physically exhausted I've seen some cases I've gone to, to dogs and you know people to know and say oh it's have a little cut and it just happened you go there, a big hole, half of the neck out. It just happened. Maggots falling out. It just happened. How it could just happen? How you didn't notice that before? I mean, I got, I went to dog. It was a, a pit bull and I would never forget this. They had a cow chain on the neck. The dog was skin and bones. It had tumors at birth, right? I saw it to be so gory. And uh, they were like, just taking a boy to sleep. You know, taking it put to sleep. And I, you know, and another one of my pet peeves, I always, for me, time somebody call and they want, they're going to put down the dog. I, I usually beg the people. I mean, it's taking money out of my pocket, but I don't care. I ask people, please have the vet come home and put the dog down instead of taking it away. Because like us, when we go to the doctor, it's frightening. So likewise, it's the same thing for the dog. They're terrified, first of all, when they get there. And then they know. They could smell that you're going to put them. So they're scared. So you're going to put them down in an environment that they don't know. And don't talk about the people who don't want to be there with them. Or they can't take it. And they, I mean, come on. What about the dog? You think the dog can take it? You know, the dog has given you a life of, of happiness and pleasure. And you just, at the time when the dog is going, you're just abandoning them. They look around. They look around to see the person they love. And if they don't see them, it's traumatic when they're, when they're transitioning. It's traumatic for them. And that's why if they don't come and I'm there, I make sure I'm there and I sing with them and I pray with them when they're going. You know, I mean, there are times when you have to put down a dog. And yes, I've had a sister who had cancer and I understand she died, unfortunately, but she had a horrible death. And I used to say, God, I wish we could have euthanized her because it was so painful for her. 
So there are times that, you know, a lot of people, and I, 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 you know, that's their feeling that if they don't want to, you don't want to put down the dog. But they, they sometimes they're suffering. They're really, really suffering. You know, and if give, if you could eliminate that suffering, then. But um, it is uh, especially to having to be juggling appointments and you have to be thinking, I have the three phones, right? People call in all three phones and I have to be making appointments. And then you're thinking of the traffic. You know, it's okay. Well, you didn't expect traffic here. There's traffic and that slows us down. And I'm like, you know, so it gets, it's tiring. It, it's very, very tiring. And what is your self-care routine then? How do you kick back and relax and give Margaret some time for herself? You want the answer for that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't. And everybody gets mommy, mommy and Marcy and everybody are like, oh, everything is the dogs, the dogs, the dogs, the dogs. But because it's by the time I finish working, it's to feed the strays. Normally I'm now coming in and, and of course that it doesn't stop there. The people call in all hours of the night. But baby, as I said, I wouldn't give it up for the words. It's what makes me happy. And people say it's what keeps me young too. <laughs> <laughs> So well, tell me about that. Tell me about what is the rewards of this very demanding job. It's fulfilling because of my passion for animals. I would come home and I'm here with my dogs and that's all I need. I know it's selfish, I know, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, at least your dogs are, are bringing you that comfort and, and knowledge that, that they're safe and loved and you are too as well with them. Yes. Yep. But that's what makes me happy. I decided to go in the gym. <laughs> I'm not a gym person at all. Eh? I like sports. So I decided to go in the gym. <laughs> yes, that's always helpful. So I went to the gym. I was there for two weeks and I actually was enjoying it because I was doing cross fitness. Two weeks. Bam, COVID. After all the pain, eh? after all the pain, I go through all the pain, whole body muscles, everything hits in me. Shut down gym. Open back gym. Back in the gym again. I go on again. Pain, ding, ding. Shut down again. I was like, that's that. That's that. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I'm dead. It will open back, man. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. I will pull out the bicycle, like stay flat tire, and go and ride <laughs> when I have time. So when I wake up in the morning, from the time Cherry Ann gets here, I'm up normally like around six o'clock every morning. Right? And then prepare for the day. So I said I'm on the phone whole day or um, sometimes I'll go out on the field if needed. Yeah, no, and then as I said, by the time Sherry Ann comes back in, it's normally like around five, six o'clock. We have to wash down, we have to spray down, we have to clean all the crates and everything. Then I go and feed the dogs and I'm back home like around eight, nine o'clock. That's a day. And that's every day, Sunday to Sunday. Sunday to Sunday. Wow. But how has COVID affected the business, if at all? Actually, at first, like way back in, in February, it was slow for a little while. And then it picked back up because people didn't want to go out there. Because the service we provide, once you have a relationship with the vet, we will take the dog to the vet and take on all the responsibilities and then bring back. So they didn't have to go. So people preferred to call us. So we will handle it and we will go and do everything and then bring back the dog. So it picked back up. Gotcha. So at least COVID didn't stifle your activity in any way. No, it doesn't. The only thing that stifles me is car parts. <laughs> yes, I'm maintaining the vehicle, yes. Oh. oh, Jesus Christ. That is my difficulty. It takes a toll, because we're going all over Trinidad, and it takes a toll on the vehicle, and it costs me a lot, a lot. And then, of course, as a woman, you know there's rapport of women. Yes, yes. I've know I've had some mechanics who've ripped me off royally, but you know God is good and I have faith and uh, you know, hey, I press on. Yeah, press on. Well, as we wrap up, Margaret, could you remind us of the services you provide and how people can get in touch with you? Okay, so first of all, I did. I don't think I called the name of my company. It's called Pet to the Vet Limited. I am on Facebook and on Instagram. So the Instagram is pet underscore two underscore the underscore vet. And on Facebook, it's pet to the vet and much more. I have three telephone numbers, but the best one to get me at is 338-0528. But I also have 620 
4211. Would you transport cremation and um, we could handle your dog with or without you? We have the stretchers, so for that time when the dog passes, we're there for you. And we love your animals and we will take good care. We have been taking good care of all the animals. Yes, and you are highly recommended by everyone that I've spoken to. So I can imagine that all of your customers are very well satisfied with the service that you provide. So thank you very much, Margaret, for chatting. It was my pleasure. I hope we could speak again soon. Maybe if you have new developments, expansion of your business, somehow you get another van or, you know. Well, I'm planning on doing some expansions and you'll be the first person I come to when I do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that was Marguerite Miranda. I am in awe of her stamina for the job, which must take a toll. But her unwavering commitment to her clients, of the two-legged and four-legged varieties, is the fuel that keeps her passion burning. My commentary this week is about the recommendation I made to members of government to establish animal control units. You may grow tired of hearing it because I do intend to beat it like a road march. I earnestly believe it is a solution that can be of benefit to all. So for those of you who may be unaware, following the untimely mauling of one of my cats, Toro, in May this year, I set about on a search for justice. My quest led me to law enforcement, a dead end, and to local government, another dead end. I then turned my mind to solutions to the problem of stray and straying dogs in Trinidad and Tobago. Toro was killed by dogs that strayed from their home and their owner. The former did not contain them, the latter failed to restrain them. The idea essentially is that the state should be responsible in larger part than they are now for the care and protection of animals. Since a national centralized authority would be too cumbersome, I've suggested that every regional corporation, city, borough and town should have an animal control unit. Such a unit would have the appropriate space to shelter animals from within the corporation's purchases, either those found straying, those in distress or otherwise, and ensure they are adopted to safe, loving homes. Such a unit would also provide employment to a number of persons, such as animal control officers, trained in handling and care who would respond to calls from the public and conduct outreach education about animal welfare, veterinarians to attend to the medical needs of the animals brought to and housed in the shelter, and municipal police officers already assigned to each corporation who would attend to the enforcement of laws on animal cruelty or neglect should they arise and also provide security for the officers who may encounter resistance from the public. Certainly, legislation will need to be revisited for such a proposal to come to light, but I can only see it as a forward step in our nation's recognition of animals as sentient beings worthy of love and understanding. The same advancement would be extended to the humans who voluntarily assume their guardianship. So this week's Rescue Me is a little different, First, I want to plug Hope, Faith and Charity, a Facebook page started by Camille Daniram, who has been feeding stray dogs in the Maloney community for over seven years. If you can assist her by donating cat or dog food or by offering to spay and neuter the animals she takes care of on a daily basis, it would be a great help to her. You can reach Camille through her Facebook page or at 273-8468. I will now also share a bit of the interview where Marguerite talks about the rescuing done by Pet to the Vet. So here's Marguerite's Rescue Me. We are not an NGO or we do not have boarding facilities. However, we are called upon regularly to assist animal activists with the capturing of stray animals. This, of course, could be a simple process or it could be difficult depending on the temperament of the dog. Dogs that have been abused obviously requires a lot of patience. I remember spending hours in the cemetery trying to catch three dogs. I also remember sitting on the ground in a rima in the middle of the road trying to gain the trust of a dog that ran away from the foster's home. I know that the people around there must have thought that I was crazy, but hey, 
What is Mossado? It's when 